in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this when you receive eternal life you have the potential to overcome death but the question is how many christians truly are living as overcomers you know why because when you receive eternal life you are a child so your whole encounter with jesus the savior makes you a child of god it's a different thing entirely to become a son so many christians are at the level of children so god will still need to intervene to bring healing god will still need to intervene to cast out devils god will still need to intervene to break the force of flesh god will still need to intervene because they are children galatians chapter 4 verse 1 said the heir so long as he's a child is not different from a servant even though he's the lord of all so you may have all the potentials to walk in all the victory but you cannot walk in it because you are a child when you have encountered jesus the savior you need to encounter jesus the son it is in the face of jesus the son that you translate the potential of dominion into an experience but many never travel that far with jesus they only stop at the altar call and so all of the potentials are loaded in them but they are still walking like servant he said i've seen an abomination on the face of the earth that princes are trekking while beggars are riding on horses a generation must grow from being children of god to becoming sons of god because government does not belong to children government belongs to sons imagine if infants with pampas go on the street now and they start crying and shouting we no go agree we no go agree do you think the house of assembly will consider what they are saying they will say take them from the road quickly they will die they are children their number does not count children can be one million they are children children can be one billion they are children that's why the glory of the move of god in the last day is not number is stature how who is talking the question is it's not how many are talking is who is talking because children can be a million it counts for nothing you know the problem children are a consumer generation when they gather god give me food when they gather god give me healing when they gather god give me deliverance and they don't know that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness in christ jesus but it is through the epignosis there is an intercourse that you need to enter in order to know that you don't need to beg for healing anymore healing is the children's bread when you find anything wrong with your body you go to your prayer closet because if that same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead dwells in you he will quicken your mortal body so when a growth is coming you enter your chambers kakakira barakada sudak bandoria baraka after a while you will discover you enter your ascended reality and you will cause the growth the growth has no choice but to die because that is sonship sonship is when scepters are taken sonship is when governance is exercised so a generation must migrate from the revelation of jesus the savior into the revelation of jesus the son our number counts for nothing if all of us are children in fact when the devil comes and he sees that we are children he uses us as lab rats he sends cancer to one sends poverty to another sends frustration to another and hundred people gather all of them is begging god to help them but when sons arise he said when you see a mountain you will not talk to god no the power of heaven is on your inside he said you will say to this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and if you do not doubt in your heart the mountain will be removed so when you come to god you are not reporting to him about the mountain when you come to god you are gaining ascension into the realms of light you are finding out the secrets of god you are finding out the mantles of the spirit you are finding out dimensions in god because for you mountains are no longer a challenge that's where you manifest the glory of god a generation of sons we emerge from here what is the revelation of jesus the son i give you four of them very quickly and if you want your capacity to be enlarged this is what you will focus on because he didn't just become son to do the will of the father he also became son so that he can bring all of us to sonship and there are five revelations 
of sonship. Number one is the ability to image the father. It's a God who at sundry times, Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us, not by his child, by his son. And what did he call the son? Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. It's on the strength of that imaging that dominion is imparted. After he became the express image of his person, he said, upholding all things by the word of his power. So if you cannot image God, you cannot exercise dominion. If you cannot image God, you cannot be a government because the government shall be on the shoulder of the sons, not the children. But for you to be a son who can uphold all things, you must image God. So when Jesus walked the earth, he walked the earth revealing the father. Philip came to him and said, show us the father that we might know him. And he said, have you been with me all this while? And you know not the father? He said, whoever have seen me, have seen the father. Whoever have seen me, have seen the father. I reveal the father. I express the father. I manifest the father. That is what sonship is about. And so for anybody who wants an enlarged capacity for dominion, his goal should be to image the father. And there is a technology for getting there. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he said, ask of me, I will answer. He said, but I don't only answer prayer. He said, when you start praying, I start showing. And the technology of transfiguration is that what you see is what you become. He said, what manner of love has the father bestowed upon us? That we might be called the sons of God. He said, it does not yet appear what we shall look like. He said, but when we shall see him, we shall be like him. So when you start praying, God answers your prayer. But he doesn't stop there. After he answers your prayer, he said, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So the corridor of prayer is the gateway to beholding him. Every time you pray, the realms open. And as the realms open, you don't only get answer. You start seeing the dimensions of the Christ. And any dimension you see is imparted into you. The, 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 the apostle John was speaking. He said, and I, John, was in the isle called Patmos on the day of the Lord. And I heard a sound as of a trumpet. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he said, as I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And as he saw it, he said, Behold, I saw one walking in the midst of the lampstand. And Jesus began to reveal his dimension. He said, I am Alpha, I am Omega. I am the one who was, who is, and who is to come. I am the one who was dead, but liveth forevermore. He was revealing to him dimensions of Christ. But how did he see him? Because he was in the spirit on the last day. The reason we tell a generation to pray is not because of bread and wine. That's the lowest requirement of prayer. When you begin to pray, your eyes open. When you begin to pray, the heavens open. And when these dimensions happen, Christ is revealed to you. And when Christ is revealed, you become what you have seen. Because John saw the life. That was why they couldn't kill him. Church history told us they threw him into boiling oil. He couldn't die. They dragged him on the street. He couldn't even sustain injury. They didn't know how to kill him. Why? Because they kept seeing him. And the more he saw him, the more he became like him. And one of the dimensions John entered was the dimensions of life. Was the dimension that supersedes the powers of death. He said, I'm the one who was dead, but liveth forevermore. The moment John saw it, he became his inheritance in sonship. When you see him, you become like him. The second way to see him is by meditation on the word of God. Yesterday I taught you on the word. In 2 Corinthians 3:18, he said, We all with open faces, beholding us in the glass. The glory of the Lord is that we are changed into that very image from glory to glory. Please, don't, when you carry the Bible, the Bible is not about reading to go and preach. Every verse of scripture is a gateway into a dimension in Christ. In John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4, it said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. It said the same was with him in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And he said the life was the light of man. Every scripture is a dimension in God. And when you enter that dimension, light appears to you. That light will cause you to see a dimension of Christ. And when you come out from that meditation, what you see is what you become. That's the law of the spirit. And so anyone who requires capacity enlargement must make prayer and meditation a lifestyle. Because if you cannot image Christ, you cannot bear the government of Christ. 
if you cannot image Christ you cannot advance the government of God with Christ Christ must flesh out through you this is why Romans 13 14 said put on the Lord Jesus make no occasion for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof every Christian must pay the price of beholding you either behold by prayer or you behold by meditation the second law of sonship is that you must be led by the Spirit of God Romans chapter 8 verse 14 it say as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God sonship is not about gender some sisters here are more son than men <laughs> Sonship is not gender. It's the ability to image Christ. And it's also the ability to be led by the Spirit of God. As touching ordination, creativity is a disadvantage. We were not born to be creative as on matters of ordination. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you to be a prophet. Any act of creativity that deviates you from ordination has brought you into perpetual failure as far as the immortals are concerned. And so in addition to beholding Christ, you must pattern your life in such a way that you must hear God. When you hear him, you become invincible. When you hear him, you become powerful. This is why Jesus was talking to Satan. He came to tempt him. If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. He said, no. You, sonship is not about turning stones to bread. It's about living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded. Sons are not those who turn stones to bread. Sons are not those who do miracles to create a point. Sons are those who are led. They hear God. And because they hear God, they come into a precision that is beyond the realms of men. When we say God is righteous, what do you think it means? When we say God is righteous, we are talking about a distinctive feature in glory that makes it impossible for God to err. We are talking about a distinctive feature in glory that makes God different from all creatures. That's what we are talking about. And when a man begins to hear God, that level of precision and distinction is imparted into his life. And that distinction is a power. Ask the fathers, they will tell you. They never move until God speaks. The reason you see all of this regal expression of, 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 of power all around the redemption camp is because there's a man that hears God. I was told yesterday that the moment he returned from Israel, he went straight to his prayer room. And that he won't come out here today. I said, what? At that age? At that age? What, what power are you working with? What, what capacity? Meanwhile, there are 20, 22, 23, 25 year old here that can't fast for 24 hours. And a man in his 70s has touched a power that has made him to tame the flesh. In his 80s, forgive me, I'm uninformed. <laughs> Elohim Adonai <laughs> Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai <laughs> Is that every morning I want to look more like Christ listen the capacity is not the prayer the capacity is not the scripture you know no it's the transformation is the transfiguration that's where the capacity is there are people who are praying but they are thieves and they are like the Pharisees they argue and boast about hours of prayer it is not the prayer that is the capacity where does your prayer take you to and what do you see when you pray that's why you censor your focus in the spirit because when you come out you are not a Pharisee that brags with how long you have prayed now praying for long is important because it's in staying there for long that things happen but the goal is not the time the goal is the transformation the goal is the transfiguration that when you come out they see God through you the Bible said Moses ascended Mount Sinai and he was there for 40 days and 40 nights and he said in Exodus 34 verse 29 and 30 that when Moses came down he said his face shone like the sun suddenly transfiguration began to take place so much so that men could not look at him it was on the strength of that transfigurative power that governance was ex ex executed 
and so anywhere Moses came to Moses had the power to introduce the government of God until a point came Moses became the law and when Paul was talking he said when Moses is read he had mean good with God he had mean good with the world until you couldn't separate them anymore that was why when Moses's time of sojourn was over he, God needed to introduce a technology of killing him because the guy couldn't die at 120 he said his sight was not abated and when God wanted to kill him he said go to the mountains of Nebo dear I will kill you because if you kill Moses in the presence of men you have exposed something that is eternal and even the dead body of Moses demons were coming to fight for it so a man's dead body was more important than living men the devil came to fight for the body of Moses they needed to carry it to the museum of, 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 of the demonic realm. there was too much glory on the man so he knew that even the dead body was not a waste and you know what God had to mobilize an archangel an archangel that was the angel over Israel came to fight for the dead body of another man what kind of dominion is that and we saw why the angel came because that body was still needed on the mountain of transfiguration when Jesus was praying the Bible said Moses and Elijah showed up because those were the two men that carried their bodies to heaven God knew they would need it again Moses and Elijah they came to the mountain of transfiguration and they were telling Jesus what he should do what kind of dominion is that is transfiguration we all with our bright faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the Lord we are changed from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Living God and Jesus himself knew it in Matthew 17 verse 2 he said after eight days he took Peter James and John to the mountain and he said as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered his raiment began to glister and he said there appeared oh heaven can merge with earth that's where government come government is not that you have cars dominion is not that you have money dominion is that you have power to reintroduce Eden you have power to download heaven to earth so that when men step into your ecosystem they begin to interact with heavenly realities because that which was is that which is to come because that realm is where we live from and Jesus mastered it he said the son of man which is in heaven while he was yet walking in Nazareth he captured heaven he lived heaven he introduced heaven to men when a generation wants to exercise dominion through transfiguration we must ascend there and we must bring the realm back why do you think the fathers talk casually and things move because they are talking from heaven they suspend the laws of the cosmos a man can look at you and say by this time tomorrow what do you mean sir how about the laws of economics how about governmental policies it's not like he was prepared they ran to Elisha and said the situation is bad women are eating their children the, the king is helpless and he said go and tell the king by this time tomorrow a cup of barley will be sold for one shekel do you know what it means to change national economy what are you saying the prime minister said I know God I also know about the window of heaven but even if the window of heaven is open it is not possible and he told him I'm not talking about the opening of the window of heaven I'm downloading heaven to earth it's one thing for the window of heaven to open it's another thing for heaven to kiss the earth I'm downloading heaven to earth and he said because you have argued I talk to you now as a prince of Zion you will see it you will not partake of it we don't know what to hunger from that's why we waste our time on Facebook that's why we waste our time on Instagram when you know what to hunger for you will tell yourself I will not be the same and you will lock yourself away you will hide there in the presence he said they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty he shall say of his God you are my refuge and my fortress my shield and my buckler he said my God in whom I shall trust I shall not be afraid of the pestilence that wasted in noonday of the destruction and he said a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right hand he shall not come near you how can he come near you when you are living from heaven he said only with thy eyes shall thou see and behold the recompense of the wicked why because you have made God even the most high and his dwelling place your tabernacle we need sons to emerge otherwise our number counts for nothing when the princes come they know how to enslave children 
or the heir. So long as he's a child, he's not different from a servant, even though he's Lord of all. So the father places him under tutors and governors. He needs to mature to sonship. And the first law of sonship is to image God. The second law of sonship is to hear the voice of God. It will take you a long time in God's presence because God's voice is not loud. It's distinct. It's a still small voice. It will take acquaintance and many acquaintances to pick him from the spectrum of many voices. There are the voices of men. They are the voices of systems. They are voices of ideologies and philosophies. They are voices of traditions and they are demonic voices. In that spectrum of voices harassing your soul, it is in staying with God that you censor them out and you can pick the voice of the monarch of heaven. And when he talks, he said, the voice of God is full of majesty. The voice of God is upon many waters. A divider, a corner about the nations of the earth. So when a man catches the voice of God, he becomes an amplifier. So when he talks, it's no longer him talking. It's God talking through him. That's why I say, when they hear you, they hear me. That's where sonship comes from. That's where governance comes from. That's where dominion comes from. And I can tell you, this is a quest of the fathers. And that's why they are powerful. He said, I write unto you, children, because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you. But when he came to fathers, he said, I write unto you because you have known him. That is from the beginning. A young man may be fighting to fill a stadium to show that he's making impact. A father will weep if he doesn't see God in one week. So when they talk, their voices are lost. That's why we call them patriarchs. We call them patriarchs for two reasons. Number one, they journey with God until they find dimensions in God. And they introduce those dimensions to men as ways. He said, Enoch walked with God and was not. It was from the life of Enoch that we knew it is possible for a man to walk with a spirit. So he showed us that dimension. He said, Noah, when he was warned of God, he moved with fear. And he said, on the strength of that, God called him righteous. So it was from the life of Noah that we knew that one of the things that appears a spirit is reverence. So when we teach reverence today, it's the way of Noah. Abel gave a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. On the strength of that, even while he was there, he said his, his blood spake in the courts of heaven. So it was in the best life that we know that when you want to move a spirit, give a sacrifice. So when we call them patriarchs and fathers, it's not a title. It's because they have pioneered ways in God. And those ways have become insurance systems for us who are children. And the reason we call them fathers and patriarchs is also because anything you catch, you can impart it. So they constrain dimensions. A father can look at you and say, I bless you with the dew of heaven. He has no regard for inflation and deflation. When he talks, it must happen. I bless you with corn and wine. He can impart dimensions. He can constrain possibilities because he's a custodian. And so a generation must leave the distraction and press into God.